moving to Nova Scotia, I've discovered a few new plants that I didn't know existed. And whether they're just local to Nova Scotia or I'm just spending more time outside in nature, I'm not sure. But one of the things that we discovered was rose hips, and rose hips are very plentiful here near the coast. And I've noticed the closer you get to the ocean or bay water, the bigger the rose hips are. Uh, we were joking about it when my in-laws were here, and we said, the bigger you live to the ocean, the bigger your hips are. Um, but seriously though, rose hips have been a cool discovery. They're so beautiful. And really, they're just beautiful to leave on the bush and enjoy to see. But in researching them further, I learned that they're actually packed full of vitamin C. And if you dry it, you can put it in your tea when you make like a loose leaf tea. It doesn't really have much flavor, but it helps put the vitamin C into your tea to uh, help boost your immune system. As always, I would say, of course, listen to your doctor take uh, precautions when using anything that you forage and do your research. Um, I'm just sharing with you the things that we're learning and the things that we're trying out, but we are not professionals, <laughs> so just keep that in mind. I like to bring the rose hips inside and give them a good rinse and strain them off. Then what I do is I place them on a towel in my lap. Be prepared, they're really wet, so I like having a thick apron on first and then the towel and I ended up pulling in another dish towel as well. Then what you do is you are drying them off, but you're actually rubbing off little hairs that are on the outside. These hairs can be irritants to uh, your bowels and your intestines. And so you really don't want to ingest those if you don't need to. So the other thing is I don't cut open my rose hips. I take a thick needle and some embroidery floss and I strand them right on and I poke it in and I pull it all the way through. And wherever I make that hole, I just, I just push the needle on through. The reason for this is there are little hairs inside that are on the seeds. And with larger rose hips, you can actually slice open the rose hip and scoop it all out. To do it with those smaller cranberry and smaller sized rose hips, um, that would be so tedious. So I don't bother with the seeds inside, but what goes on with those seeds is those are an irritant as well to your intestines. So that's actually how they used to create itching powder, or at least that's what the internet says. So unless you want to sit and scoop out the insides, don't open up the rose hips. They're just going to dry on the string right near the fire and it will do the job totally fine without opening them up. If you're going to use them for other uses and need to open them up, I would suggest picking the larger rose hips as those will be a lot easier to work with. Dash, where are we going? Mushroom hunting. Are we going to eat all the mushrooms? Only the safe ones. How do you know if they're safe? Only if we know what, if we know what kind they are. How do you know? Because we have a book. Do we both love mushrooms? No. <laughs> Who loves the mushrooms? Actually, don't tell them. If you think you know, guess and comment down below. Let us know. <laughs> Josh. You ready to go? Yeah. What? Black cat from the web chickens again. <laughs> 
That cat, is it in with the chickens? No. Oh dear. Chickens flew at it and it kept walking. I see it sleeking away though. Oh dear. Okay. Look at the mushroom. We saw that it has gills. So half this book basically is gilled mushrooms, the other half is non-gilled. And so I looked at the gills, okay, it's a gilled mushroom. So now I go to the gilled mushroom part of the book. And then it's broken up into the colors of the gill. So there's pink, dark, brown, and then light spored mushrooms. And basically the spore is just like the coloring in between the gills. And so this is a lighter colored one. So that's what we're looking at now. And so we also have the shape to go off of. Okay. So now I'm just looking up. So they're not a white, they're more brown on top. That's kind of like the ones I showed you a picture of. Yeah, it might be these guys. As far as I can tell, these are Limacella illinita. So these ones here. And they are not edible. Not edible. So we will just leave them be. Okay. What's the best conditions to look for mushrooms in? Uh, definitely forests are they're more common. There are some in grasslands, but forests are more common because okay. they don't like a lot of sunlight for the most part. Um, they, uh, they like more moisture, so if you have a really, really dry summer, you're not going to get a lot of mushrooms. You'll still get some, but there won't be nearly as many. But the more rain, the better for the most part. Um, so we have another guy here. Are you an expert, Jeff? Nope. Nope. Can you give a disclaimer? So nobody thinks that we're telling them to go pick all these mushrooms and eat them. I am not an expert by any means. Everything I've learned is from books and YouTube. So I've not taken any official courses whatsoever. So, so please do your own research. <laughs> Okay, what does this one look like? Okay, so this one is... Does it have the gills? has the gills. It's not attached, which is interesting. So what do you mean by not attached? Can you point to it on the actual mushroom? Yeah, I'll show you in here as well. Right here where the gills come into the stalk, the little bug, that is where you want to see if 
the mushroom's gills are either free, attached, current, or notched. These guys are not touching the stalk, so that means they are free. And then we'll flip it over and we'll look at the top because now we're looking for the cap shapes. There's bell, hemispherical, convex, conical, funnel shaped, umbel. Who knows? Who knows? Knobbed and flat. I would say this is probably flat. And then there's other things to look for down here, which kind of just um, it basically dissects the, the mushroom for you. Um, this guy doesn't really have a ring or a cup. Uh, so yeah, so this is gonna be gilled mushroom again. These mushrooms here, they look kind of similar, but if you look in the picture, the gills are decurrent, which means they kind of come down the stalk. And you can see here that these are the freestyle. Yeah. So it's not those. Got it. What is it? This is a fairy ring fungus. Okay. Edible. Oh. Yeah. So how are you sure? So the size is right. Caps are one inch to two inches across, which is right for that. The shape of the, the cap is right. The coloring is right. The skin is right. The stalks are right. Um, the texture is right. The score is right. Everything matches. It's beautiful. lesson learned too much sunlight on your potatoes will turn them green and it creates a chemical to grow in them called solenoid and you can't eat your potatoes so we are gonna bag them up and tuck them away in a dark spot in the drawer and hopefully use them as seed potatoes for next year 
this winter I plan to sit down and do a little more research on the best way to cure your potatoes. We didn't have this problem last year so we're not sure exactly what went wrong but the best we can figure is too much sunlight. Yeah. yeah. 